So I've been listening to people who do remarkable things and I'm sitting there and I'm smiling a bit. I'm smiling about the pace setters because those of you who know anything about GE will know that when Jack Welsh was the CEO, those are the kind of leaders he wanted in his organization. Thankfully, nothing wrong with it, but the world has moved on. We've moved into the field of 21st century leadership, uh, where we're a little bit more collaborative and inclusive and where networking is much more important. So um, what I'm going to try and take you through is a little bit about how we do leadership in GE. And it doesn't really matter that I'm the head of healthcare because pretty much I could be running aircraft engines next year. A little bit of a worry for most of you in the room, but um, it, is indeed, it is indeed possible. So um, at, at the leadership organized level in our organization, remarkable things do happen. And uh, look, I'm a great example. I started off as a nurse. So for any of you who've read my biography, I started off as a nurse. Um, and my head teacher, if she was still alive, would be absolutely horrified to hear that I was running a commercial organization. She'd be really surprised. So um, to take you through where we are, I mean, first of all, you know, this is just a little bit of provenance about our company. We are one of the original Dow Jones listed companies, and indeed we are the only one still listed. And we didn't have a 130 year plan. So we're a company that have used improvement science to its ultimate to keep performing at the kind of level we perform at. So that's sort of almost, that's my little permission to be here for 20 minutes today. So what we do at GE in terms of leadership is we inspire others to be at their best. So it's not about me, it's actually about the people around me. The more successful people are around me, the more su successful I am. So it's a we organization. And pretty much what we do now is we are very collaborative, we are highly experiential, so it's all about learning on the job, and we are a meritocracy. So you've got a little bit of a Southern Hemisphere theme this afternoon in this, in this second session, and uh, I'm a bit of an example of the meritocracy in GE as well. So uh, what we do is we tell people what we expect of them, we help them to get there, and then critically important, we hold people accountable. So I'm going to talk just around those three bits. And uh, you know, I'm not talking the academic stuff here. This is what I do every day. I run a business, I'm a leader of a business. I'm uh, head of the Women's Network in this region as well, where we're developing women. The reason I'm shooting off is because I'm going to address a group of European um, junior managers to help get them up into uh, a higher state, if you will, so they're able to start running our businesses. So uh, this is what we do, it's what we live and breathe, it's what expect is expected of us, it's certainly at my level. So the first thing that happens is every single one of us has a goal and an objective. They are aligned overall to the company strategy, but we all have our own personal goals and objectives. And it shows us how we perform and we, we have some growth values. So uh, we talk about values, we talk about the how and the what. So this is, this is the how really in terms of our growth values. And we help people to get there. So as I said, we're very experiential. So 80% of what you do happens on the job. We give people challenging job assignments, stretch opportunities, lots of visibility and accountability and seriously candid assessment and feedback. We, uh, we've started a, a coaching program for all of our managers. So anyone who manages one person or more goes on a coaching program and we have something called Truth Talk. That's interesting. I had to have a Truth Talk session with my boss and interestingly, it wasn't him giving the Truth Talk to me. I had to give my boss feedback. That's interesting. I don't know if any of you ever tried that, um, but I had to give my boss feedback and I started off being very politically correct and quite nice. And he said, OK, Bettina, cut all the nice stuff. What would you really say to me? So in fact, in that coaching session, I can quite easily say it here. I said to him, I have a problem with the way you run leadership meetings because we're already busy people. We come to your meetings. But what happens is you don't stop people from tapping away on their laptops and from taking calls and from leaving the meeting early. And for the rest of us, that's highly disruptive 
it looks disrespectful to you, and you don't look like you're the leader of us. Um, it's very interesting what our leadership meetings look like now. <laughs> very interesting, very different. And then the other thing that we do is we actually develop our leaders. So I think um, you were talking, David, around whole system development programs. So we run leadership programs in GE. I recently was on one of them. I was with people from aircraft engines, oil and gas, capital, um, some of our investigative sciences businesses, people from China, from Russia, from the USA. And so we work together on whole system leadership programs and they are so beneficial, so much more beneficial than just the ones that are very specific to a region, to a particular business. And here's the thing about holding people accountable. So in my previous job, I also worked for a healthcare company and I worked for a very, very inspirational leader. And the thing that he taught me that has meant more to me than any other lesson I learned in leadership was about your annual appraisal or your evaluation. I think you call it the appraisal system as well in, in the NHS. And he said to me, Bettina, as a people leader, when you are sitting having that discussion, that is singularly the most important 60 to 90 minutes that you are having with an employee in a year. And do not ever let them walk away thinking it was a waste of time. And I tell you, it is such an important lesson because it breaks my heart if I hear an employee saying about the annual appraisal, it's just a waste of time. I don't know why they bother. It means that we're not being honest as leaders. We're not giving candid feedback and we're not giving our employees the sense that we value them and we want to develop them. So just a little something that I learned a number of years ago. So we have this in GE, we call it the employee management system. Sorry, excuse me. And what we do is we measure the what you've done as well as the how you've done it. And I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. So on the left hand side on performance, that's the what. And on the bottom, on your y-axis, is the values, the how. And the interesting thing in GE, we're a commercial organization, so we're here to run a business, we're here to make a profit, a fair profit. But the interesting thing is, if you look at the blocks, we call this a nine blocker. You only get rated excellent when you have equal proportionality or maybe a little bit of a shift on both axes. So if you are fantastic at your job, but an absolute idiot about how you go about it, you're not in a very good place, right? Because you're rated as a development needed. That's not quite ready to leave the organization, but it's not a great place to be. And I can tell you the person in the bottom left-hand corner is ready to leave the organization because they not only are an idiot, but they are incompetent as well in their role. So you don't want to be there anytime soon. So what we do though, is the people that are in the development needed category those are the people we spend some time with to work with them to help them improve. If they choose not to take that or choose not to improve, they won't stay in the organization more than two years. Just to give you an example, so this is how we sort of use the performance management system, the values and the culture of our company. Do you want a bit more time? I think we are going to make some of these slides available afterwards. I'm going the wrong way, sorry. So the other thing we do is we do an opinion survey. And it happens once every two years. And it is anonymized. And boy, don't your employees say something about you as a leader. And as leaders, we get this feedback. And it is not private. It is shared with the rest of the organization. And if you have more than eight people who've responded, so you don't need very many, I've got an organization of 800. So uh, I'm always outed, if you will, because there are always at least nine people who want to give some feedback about me. And uh, pretty much my boss and my boss's boss sees what the employees think of me in every way, whether they would recommend a friend to come and work in my team, whether I'm collaborative, whether I empower people, etc. So. We, as leaders, work very hard with these results. We take it as positive feedback. Um, it's very difficult. You know, you're reading the feedback and you're thinking, 
bloody hell, I can't believe you're saying about me. That is so unfair. I really care, you know. I'm a fantastic person to work for, but you just have to sort of put it aside and have a think about things and think, why would they be looking at me in this way? Why is that the kind of messaging they're getting about the way I run the business, about the way I collaborate? Am I not speaking with people enough? Am I not inclusive enough? So we, all of us, and it goes all the way up to our CEO, Jeff Himmelt, he also gets at least eight employees who give him direct feedback every two years. And he actually sends out what his plan is, what he's going to do differently. So we permanently are working on improving our leadership of our business while still running the business. So we don't stop to do the one thing and then pick something up and then go on again. It's just a continuous loop. I've just said that, we don't stop, we don't stop evolving so the kind of things that we do, we have some signature programs. This first program, the LIG, as we call it, because we like to make everything into a three-letter acronym. We're famous for it. But the LIG program is our leadership innovation and growth program. We use it in every business. We use it across our businesses. We use it across functions. And it is to drive excellence and an improvement culture in our organization. And recently, we've started introducing it to use with outside clients, if you will. So this course coming up in November, which will be run at Cleveland Clinic, I believe we may have some people from the NHS in the UK attending this course. Very, very beneficial, but it's something that we run internally as well. And we have a really innovative problem-solving program. So one of the things we do a lot of in GE is something called Workout. And it is as simple as you were talking about flow of patients in, um, I was looking for Maureen actually, but I can't see at the moment. There you, oh, there you are. Um, talking about flow of patients through an operating theatre or through an ER. So in our organisation, it could be as something as simple as parts not arriving on time, um, not arriving on time in our workshops, or maybe we have a quality issue somewhere, or sometimes we have a delay in paying some of our suppliers. And we get the people together who are best placed to solve that problem. We put them in a room, and they are people, they're not the senior leaders of the organization. They're people who work in that function every day. We put them in the room with a facilitator, and these people find the solutions. And it is absolutely incredible, some of the things that they do. So we use Workout a lot, and we use it just within my team in the UK, we use it globally. I was involved in a, in a global one over um, reporting. We, we are very concerned about retaliation in our company. So we have a global business, multicultural. Um, we have a high degree of integrity in business practice. And we want any employee at any level of the organization to feel that they can come and report a concern whether it's about a business practice, whether it's about workplace bullying, discrimination, we want people to feel they work in an open environment where they can report and not feel that they're going to suffer retaliation. And as part of our opinion surveys and part of the pulse work that we do around our employees, we noticed that we had a very low incidence of reporting from China. So I was involved in a team, you know, there were people from capital, from aviation, all sorts of different functions, in looking at understanding why the Chinese weren't reporting. Because we knew there must be stuff going on in China. I mean, there's stuff going on in Russia, there's stuff going on in the UK. Must be stuff going on in China. And what we found out is that we were trying to apply an American system, American videos, to encourage our Chinese colleagues to report. And what we did was we actually made a Chinese video respecting the Chinese culture, um, respecting the hierarchy, and our open reporting has gone up 90%. So it just shows, you know, sometimes you put different groups of people together to look at a problem. We didn't use management consultants. We used some of our leaders and got the solution. So just an example of some of the problem solving that we do. And pretty much this really sort of wraps it up. I think it's, it's the, the same slide you were using, David, but in a slightly different way. So what we have is we have a management system 
that interrelates with the leadership system, that interrelates with the productivity system, which is how we get the continuous loop of leadership improvement in our business. And that's it, really. That's me.